Seekers, I'm Nick. I've been teasing this project for such a long time on the channel. I've been dropping hints, I've been talking about it at the end of the videos because I was pretty sure no one had even noticed. We got the ball rolling on this back in August last year, but the time has finally come to start working on it. Silverstone came to the party and hooked us up with something amazing and something that we've been wanting to cover way more of on the channel. We're gonna be doing more servers. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, except when it's like a public holiday or, you know, sometime we don't upload. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the chassis we're building our new storage server in, the Silverstone RM3163U rack mount enclosure. Let's do it. This might not be everyone's cup of tea, but we're actually really excited about this product because A, I love building servers, B, I got a data center background and C, who doesn't love servers with the crazy amount of storage? Let's take a look. All right, let's pop the top off this bad boy, the RM316 from Silverstone. It's a 3U rack enclosure with plenty of storage options. Okay, what do we got here? These are all the front panel connectors for the case. So what you got is your LAN 1 LED and your LAN 2 LED. These are used for network activity. Uh, most server motherboards have network activity headers on the motherboard as well. There's a hard disk activity light, there's a power activity light, there's a reset switch and a power switch. Also included is a USB 2.0 header connector so you can plug things into the front of the server when it's racked. It has a distribution board at the front and you can see how everything is plugged in right up the front of the case. This will show your network activity, your hard disk activity and also it's where the USB headers connect up into. On the front of the case it's got an ID tag slash a service tag. This is really helpful if your server is racked in the data center and you need to identify the rack because chances are you might have like 10 of these in a single rack and you want to know what the IP address is or what it is. It's just a little plastic tag that you can pull out and push back in. Very, very handy and it's a nice little additional feature. All right, let's look at the cooling options. It's got four 80 millimeter fans that are built in. However, if you like, you can replace these, but the four fans that come with it are pretty good. However, I think they're quite loud. So I might be replacing these for the build that we do because of how loud they are. And yeah, they just clip in nice and easily just like that. Next up is the PWM fan headers that are along the front. Uh, each back plane has four PWM fan connectors. However, there are only four of them are occupied on this and you can actually go ahead and plug in four more if you wanted to add some additional cooling. This is the mid plate where all of the fans are vented through to push the air across the motherboard and out the back of the system. This is a pretty standard airflow pattern for any type of rack server. And yeah, they've executed this quite well and I think it's gonna do exactly what we need it to do. There's space for one, two and a half inch drive. I would recommend putting an SSD in here for system storage because uh, your server motherboard might not have an M.2 slot. There's also space for a slot loading DVD or CD-ROM drive or like a low profile one. I won't be using this and if I do, it'll have a CF or a SD card reader in it. Each backplane has two mini SAS connectors, each of which support four drives on each connector and each backplane supporting eight drives in total. These backplanes are actually built really, really nicely and I really, really like how they're laid out. On the other side of the backplanes, you'll notice each of them requires three Molex connectors to power all of the hard drives. This is pretty standard stuff for backplanes. And yeah, like I mentioned, it supports up to 16 drives, both SATA or SAS, depending on what drives you have. I have no recommendations here. It's just basically what you want to do with it. And we're going to pull one of the sleds out so you can see what's inside. Each sled comes out really easily. It's a very sturdy clicking mechanism. Once it slides out, you'll notice it actually comes with four screws to mount the drives in, which is very, very nice and a quite a nice way to organize everything so you don't have to dig through bags of screws every single time you want to put a drive in. The chassis supports two U power supplies. You can have dual redundant or just a single power supply. It comes with some adapter brackets depending on what type of power supply you want to put in. So you've got one for a single two U power supply or a dual redundant power supply. Yeah, it just depends on 
whichever way you want to use this enclosure. And it does not support standard ATX power supply, so you will need a 2U power supply. Motherboard support is quite extensive with this case. It supports up to EATX and SSIEB size motherboards. Uh, some dual socket boards might be too long for this, but chances are most of the motherboards that you want to put in this type of enclosure will fit no problem. It's got seven standard PCI slots for expansion. If you did want to put a GPU in this type of enclosure, I would highly recommend it being lower than the top of the bracket because chances are it won't fit. And yeah, here's just a little example of a motherboard that we would possibly be using in here. And this is actually an Intel server board as well. Overall, the build quality is pretty great. There aren't any sharp edges to cut yourself on that you typically find on cheaper rack enclosures. The 16 drive bays offer an incredible amount of storage potential. And the fact that, yeah, you can put any motherboard that you want in it is really, really cool. As you guys can tell, I'm pretty excited about this. <laughs> I'm so excited to get this build started, but yeah. We're just not quite there yet. We've got no timeline. There's nothing set in stone just yet, but we've got everything lined up. But just be, just, just know this guys, it's gonna be pretty damn special. <laughs> if you're interested in grabbing one of these cases of your own uh, for like a storage project of your own or something like that, they're going for around 700 US dollars at the time of filming this. As far as rack chassis go, that's a pretty fair price considering it comes with two back planes and it has a fair amount of expansion. Simple as that. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you do not like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and man, I'm so excited to build in this server. You have no idea. We're going to be filling these up with so much storage. <laughs> Oh, that fell out. Awkward. Oh,